Hi friends, some time ago I released a video about the industrial production of stencils. They are used in microelectronics for soldering SMD components onto a printed circuit board. I advise to watch it before this part. A link to the video can be found in the description. Well, today as promised we are going to the shore of the Pacific Ocean to visit one of the biggest Chinese factories for the production of printed circuit boards. We will visit the mega factory of the company GLC. Why do I call it a mega factory? You will understand it a little later. We will only visit the production of double sided printed circuit boards. But the company has several similar factories in which manufacturing of more complex multi layer boards is organized. So the total scale of the company GLC is truly amazing. The shooting was spent few days, and I hope you will appreciate it. Please support this video and share it with your friends in social nets. I should note that many of the processes that take place in this factory are a commercial secret and are strictly classified. I will show you the full cycle of creating printed circuit boards, but we will not go into the smallest details. The factory works 24 hours daily and 7 days a week non-stop. There are several shifts of workers. Given that the plant is 90% automated, it has a monstrous production capacity. It is very important to point out that this is a factory with a full production cycle. Process starts from the unloading of raw materials and ends with the finished product, with the subsequent shipment of this product to the customer. By the way, anyone can order a PCB. For this, you just need to go to the company's website, download your Gerber file, choose the necessary options, pay for the order, and that's all. The price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. It's very cheap. All the necessary links will be found in the description. The company can produce boards of any complexity, beginning from simple one side and ending with the most complex multi layer boards for modern computers. Ultra high speed and high speed CNC machines of the latest generation are used to perform simple and complex operations. Everything begins here, where raw materials are unloaded. This is mainly textilite and auxiliary materials that are needed for the production. Then the sheets of textilite go to the first workshop. This is a huge placement in which machines cut and process textilite to the desired size. Moreover, that dimensions can be any. The textilite is cut and the conveyor moves them to the other machines for processing the edges. Then they assemble into packages of several pieces and are redirected to another workshop and we will be teleporting there to follow them. Well, here we are. Huge machines with computer numerical control perform their work. Drill holes on the board. Yes, in the industry everything is slightly different. Holes are drilled before etching. Here are about 70 units of drilling machines. Step 3. Drilling. These machines can automatically change the drill depending on the diameter of the hole to be drilled.
In addition to the main holes are also drilled precision fixing holes. They are needed later for other processes, for example, the precise installation of a photo mask to transfer the board image to the foil surface. After drilling, burrs may occur. Therefore, the boards are processed and cleaned with abrasive brushes. Fourth stage is deposition. This is a chemical process during which an additional layer of copper is deposited on the board. At this stage, the primary metallization of the holes is formed. Metallization is a very important step when creating double sided or multi layer printed circuit boards. It makes possible to transfer an electrical signal to the next layers of the board. After this process, the boards are thoroughly washed and dried. Step 5. Photoresist. At this stage, the entire board will be covered with a photosensitive film, a photoresist. Then the pre made photo mask is combined with the board. That's why the precision holes are drilled in the initial stage and after alignment of edges takes place exposure. Under the influence of ultraviolet, the polymerization of the photoresist occurs on unprotected by the photo mask areas. The masks themselves are a transparent film on which the printed circuit board is printed. They don't differ from those that we do at home for the photoresistive technology of creating printed circuit boards. Next comes the exposure process, and after that, the extra photoresist is washed off. At the very end, the boards are baked in powerful ovens to increase the mechanical strength of the photoresist. Maybe for somebody, the sixth stage will seem strange. Do you remember the metallization of the holes? In the holes now, there is a thin copper layer, while fragile and not protected. At this stage, a layer of tin lead alloy is chemically deposited on previous copper layer, thereby obtaining reliable metallization of all the holes. So, the tin lead alloy is also deposited on the bare copper tracks from which the photoresist was removed earlier. And these tracks will eventually remain with us. Everything else that is under the photoresist dissolves during etching. The process is actually quite complicated. The boards are transformed from one chemical bath to another up to 10 times. At the end of this process, the remaining photoresist is completely removed. Step 7. Etching. This is more familiar to many. Etching is the process of chemical removal of unprotected areas of copper. The etching bath itself is a huge conveyor in which the board is repeatedly processed by jets of etching solution. On the output we get an almost ideal etching board. At the very end of this process, the lead coating is removed in the similar chemical manner. Of course, small non-edged areas can be formed, but later the boards will pass a detailed quality control, where all will be corrected.
Stage 8. Visual Quality Control Powerful scanning systems with an optical sensor can very quickly detect any minor problem. If it is found, workers under powerful microscopes manually correct the defects, for example, remove non-etched areas. This work is done mostly by women. Probably they are more attentive. In the case of larger problems such as overetching, the board is rejected and it will not participate in further processes. The next stage is the masking. The mask is designed to protect copper tracks from corrosion, mechanical damage, and in general, the mask gives the board an industrial appearance. The mask can be any color. The company offers customers a wide choice, but basically it's a traditional green. In this workspace, workers usually walk in special shoes and masks. The composition of the solder mask is made from epoxy and has a peculiar odor, but I didn't smell any. Here, through the mesh stencils, epoxy paint is applied on the board. The principle doesn't differ from the screen printing. At the end of the process, the boards heat up and then quickly cooled for a quality curing of the epoxy paint. Step 11. Silk Screen Printing This process is almost the same as the process of applying the solder mask. This time, the same way marks and contours of components, logos, and even initials of clients are applied, that is to say, everything that the customer will ask. At the end of the process, the boards are transferred to the furans, where again heating occurs, then cooling. All this is done to obtain a quality and durable drawing. By the way, if silk screen printing is needed on both sides, no problem. The boards will turn over, the picture will be applied, and that's all. Since for each board a new stencil is needed, you will probably have a question, where do these stencils come from? A good question. Well, we are heading to the next workspace for the answers. A huge computer control laser at a high speed literally burns the stencil, and then the stencils come under the press. Well, the next stage you have already seen. Stage 12. Surface Treatment During this stage, bare sections of copper, usually spots where we'll solder the components, are covered either with technical gold or simply tin plated. This is how the gliding appears on some places of the board. This is done to protect bare areas of copper. Gold isn't oxidized at all. And the tin compound protects the board for decades and doesn't lose its original shine. Step 13. Cutting 
one of the last production processes. Printed circuit boards, regardless of their size, are created on huge sheets. One sheet can have more than 10 identical boards, which need to be cut. Right now, we are where the cutting is taking place. A huge number of machines, of course CNC, are engaged in cutting. There are also machines that are designed for partial cutting, that is, they simply form a fault line. Surely, many of you have ordered at AliExpress a batch of small boards and faced with this phenomenon. The fourteenth stage is what I love the most. These machines resemble something unearthly. They are designed to test the created PCB and they do it with incredible speed. These robots not just check the board, but also compare it with the original Gerber file. Obviously, human intervention here is unnecessary. Further. The tested boards once again pass visual quality control. They are counted before packing and sorted, and then go to the packaging department. I will not comment the packaging process. Here everything is clear. The final stage, warehouse and shipping. From here, customers' orders are sent to the most remote corners of the planet, so that we can make our own projects on high-quality industrial printed circuit boards. As I said in the first video, GLC basically works with large electronics manufacturers. And maybe the PCB of your computer or smartphone was made at this factory by the hands of these ordinary people. Think about it. Well, I have to say goodbye until your meetings. With you as always was Kassian TV.